Thanks for joining us for another edition of Communication Steroids, the weekly podcast that shows you how to become a better public speaker, a more effective presenter, and a conscious and clear communicator. This is where you can find tips, tools, and techniques that you can put to use today. Here are your hosts of Communication Steroids, Tim Gonzo-Gordon and Roger Pike. So, good day. Good day, mate. <laughs> Welcome to the Great White Central Oregon Willamette Valley. Not quite Great White North, but you know. And no matter where you go, there you are. <sighs> Just don't get into Oregon humor in this particular podcast. I would appreciate it if you wouldn't do that. I'm Tim Gordon. And I'm Roger Pike. Over there is my partner, Roger. It's the podcast from Communication Steroids, where we talk about all fun things to do with uh, communication of some sort. Right, and and particularly the actual nuts and bolts of communicating as opposed to the tools that you use to communicate with, the devices, the microphones, (laughs) and things like that. No, we talk about presenting, how to be a better presenter. Interpersonal communications. Mm -hmm. And we came across a topic we're going to share with you tonight, which has to do with... Uh, being more social at business functions. How to mingle. Oh, mingle. I like that. How to mingle. How do you mingle? What's your, wh- how do you mingle? There, the are, there, are, there are techniques for mingling, believe it or not. Do you have that, a list? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can t- think of some off the top of my head that are very important. Uh, one of them is, is, uh, is find the edge of your comfort zone and push a little bit past it. In other words, don't stick with the people you know. Go out and meet folks. Yeah, That's you're there to actually moment. meet new people and network. Yeah. Uh, have business cards handy, but don't push them on people. Mm-hmm. That doesn't work. Exactly. I'd say you need to have kind of a goal. Let's say you're going to a networking thing and you know there's going to be uh, 50 people there. Mm-hmm. If there's at least 50 people there, you should be there. Yeah. If that's what you decide oh, yeah. you're going to do. So let's say, okay, I know seven people there. I'm going to talk with them. But before I get to them, I'm going to meet seven other people. There you go. So have a goal that you and, and 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 one of the things you need to do is introduce yourself. Try and find a, a topic that's common ground. Ask a couple of questions mm-hmm. uh, that have to do with maybe uh, what, what what do they do? Of course, if they're there networking, you don't know what they do. That's a good opening question. Yeah, and there's it's always possible. There are always things to find in common. There's always. topical things like oh, the, do you, are you a duck fan, for instance? Yeah, there you go. Hey, they're and, going and to the I championship. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you can find common ground fairly quickly if you just think about it. Right. And, and then once you get into a conversation, don't dominate the conversation and don't stay there forever. You're there oh, to mingle. In fact, it's, right. it's easy to say to them, oh, by the way, there's someone over there I want to go meet. And you can excuse yourself very easily. Right. You've spent five minutes there, eight minutes there. Um, and they may have been looking for a way to extricate themselves, too. So, I mean, you it, could be doing them a favor. Yeah, you, you absolutely could. I mean, when I was running for uh, a, a, a statewide legislative, a state legislative office, right. uh, we used to have a limit on the amount of time that I could spend schmoozing a particular person. And if I got to that time limit, my campaign manager would tap me on the shoulder and move me along. Yes. And and you should you should be the same way. The most valuable resource that you possess, bar none, is your time. And so uh, sh- spread it around. Don't spread dominate around. any one person with them because they've got time too. Their their time is valuable as well. Yep. So keep in mind that this person is probably wanting to meet other people as well. So you've met somebody and you've exchanged cards or information. And you've said, okay, let me call you next week because I got something I want you to look at. Great, that's a good time to move along. To, to, to move the next along, one. yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I guess there uh, there's exceptions to everything. And if you happen to approach someone who who sees your business card, you talk with them about for five minutes. You you talk about the things that you're doing together, and all of a sudden he jumps up and he says, you know what? I've been looking for a guy just like you, services just like those. Do you have 20 minutes to talk with me about about this contract we're trying to put together? Then set an appointment. Set an appointment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but don't do it there. Yeah, because you're there to network. Yeah. Uh, another here's a, here's a tip that I like, and that is, if you're going to get a cold drink, you're going to get a beer or a martini or something, and one of those ty- types. That of was function, on my list, yeah. by the way. Put it in your left hand, not your right. Oh, so you can shake. So you can shake, and plus yeah. you're not switching hands and shaking someone's hand with a clammy, with a, with cold, a clammy, cold, hand. wet, damp hand. Keep yeah. your wet drink in. In the cold drink in the left hand, people right. shake with their right, and and you know, of course, common sense. Stay away from tables and lampshades. I mean, don't drink too much. Don't go dancing on the table <laughs> in the lampshade. I mean, it's just it's just common sense. Tables and lampshades. Well, you know the classic joke at the office party: someone gets too drunk and they dance they on. They put desk the lampshade lamp on, shade on yes. their head. Yeah. They dance on it. I desk. wasn't dancing. I was jumping up and down. <laughs> <laughs> I was not dancing on the table. I was just. 
you know, testing its strength and durability. Yeah. No, yeah. but don't you know, drink responsibly. I mean, you don't want to come off as a stick in the mud prude kind of a guy. Uh, it's kind of like using. Uh, 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 and these are typically the evening meetings. That, right. That it's right. more of a sociable as opposed to a business networking event. You don't see alcohol too much at those types of events. Yeah, anymore, the, at least the, I don't. The three or four martini lunch is a thing of the past too. I mean, it just doesn't yeah. happen all that much in anymore. your world. <laughs> Yeah, it's a thing of the past in my world. Well, it's a thing of the past in my world too. So, yeah. so you know, so drink responsibly. Keep your drink in your left hand. Be sure that to understand why you're there. Set goals for yourself and move around. Mingle. That's just key. What should you wear? Uh, if it were me and I was doing it, uh, I would. That's kind of why I asked you. <laughs> you. I would. I would try and 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 mimic the dress of the majority of the people who are going to be present. Or, or the people that I wanted to blend in with. Okay. That's how I'd probably handle it. So you're trying to blend in, not stand out. not No clown shoes, no big <laughs> uh, orange wig. Well, and no Brooks Brothers suits either, if that's not appropriate to the occasion. I mean, you see what I'm trying to say. I, well, I, you know, I, I agree up to a point. Uh, let's say that you're a kind of a person who really dresses down. I mean, dre- does a great job of dressing, dressing up, whatever you mm-hmm. want to call it. Right. And you got like a nice bow tie or whatever, something unusual. Right. If that is who you are... Be who you are. Well, yeah, I I, I can go along with that, but uh, uh, don't make a point of doing something you don't normally do. If that's you normally, normally and pe- and you show up and people expect that because they've seen you before, yeah, well, by all means, keep you, it up. You know, and if you're but if you're trying to sell uh, uh, logging equipment and you go to a loggers convention and you you usually wear a Brooks Brothers suit and they're all there in flannels. I mean, you're gonna. You're, it, it, I think that if, that if you're doing that, you would already know that. Yeah, well, that's yeah, but that's my point. I mean, try try and uh, th- there used to be an old saying that when you're in the office, you should dress to the level of the next job above you. Okay. Uh, and and that that makes perfect sense. You should always dress to dress according to the job that you think you want to get next. Uh, and 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 I think that you that you also might look at that in terms of your clients. Dress to the dress to the client that you want to to get next. So if 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 they have, if you're going to a a, a function that has a set style, I think that you probably might want to try and, and mimic that style. Right. Let's shift gears just a little bit. Let's say you're talking with someone. What kind of things can you do to get their attention? I like this technique, which I've seen used before, and I've used it before. And that is to after you've introduced yourself and you understand what they do and that sort of thing, ask a question that has to do with how you can help them. Say, what kind of client is your best kind of client? Yeah, that's I may good. not I like be your that. client, uh, but I may know people that are your perfect kind of client. So so don't say, just say, I'm going to send you a bunch of people. Say, well, who are the one or two types of people that I can send you Yeah, that might be a good fit for you? Well, personally, to get people's attention, I like to screech like a hawk attacking a jackrabbit. <laughs> No. That would definitely get attention. Get attention. No, I, I think that's a very, very good question. And and I, I, I we we talk about a certain um, uh, procedure that we like to use, and we like to use it in almost every communication situation that we're in. Uh, and it's no different here too. And that is the idea of active listening, particularly the element of active listening in which you get somebody talking and then ask questions to continue their talking. Right. And and once you have established that you have some kind of commonality common area of interest or maybe even something that you can do that can help someone and and that you might be able to sell to them don't start your sales pitch ask questions and and if you have an event that you're going to do or going to be at another event invite these people if if it's appropriate to do that so that you're kind of looking for the next time you'll meet them if this is someone that you really would like to do business with you think you can help them they can help you Mm -hmm. however that may work uh, may work uh Figure out what the next step is. Maybe that's, let me get your card and I'll call you in the next week. Mm-hmm. It may be that, oh, I'm going to be at this thing on this Friday night. Can you come? All right. right. I'm throwing this such and such. So try and figure out what the next step is. Maybe yeah. it's, uh, I, I really want to do business with you. What's a good time to come to your office? Do remember, of course, that even it, that this is a social situation. And the ostensible purpose of a social situation is to have fun. And a lot of people are going to be there with the idea of, I'm going to network and have fun. So that's why you don't want to get into the hard sell it's true. mode. And it, it, what kind of situation is it? Why are you there? Is it a business networking meeting like a BNI? Is it, yeah, is yeah. it just a party? Well, that's a whole different scene. Right. I'm, I'm thinking of the, the, the situation where it's a social setting 
but there are business intents for Bina. That's why you're there. Oh, I, because, I understand. Yeah, yeah. So, so the, it does. The context is very, very important. Very important. Yeah. So. And you don't want it. You don't want to uh, 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 turn a social function that is intended primarily as a social function, but secondarily as a way to meet people, get around, and network. You don't want to turn that into an unfun. Here's my business card. Let's talk no, shop. You wouldn't do that because you wouldn't get invited back, and no one will come see you. <laughs> but if you get into a conversation, for instance, about the kind of business you do and the kind of things you do, and you say, "Oh, I blog," by the way, and they go, "Oh, you blog? Uh, I, I do some blogging too." Well, then you extra- exchange information on how you can check each other's blog out, and, right? And maybe I can do something for you there, and, and whatever that may lead to. You know, you, use your own creativity. So there's a lot of different ways to, to approach that. So, Anything else? No, I think that that about wraps it up. <laughs> well, let's go get social then. I'm, a, I, I'm four square behind that. Uh, yes. Okay. Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. That's uh, Roger Pike over there. <laughs> and that's Tim Gordon. And this there. is the podcast from communicationsteroids.com. <laughs> <laughs>